Okay, so to begin with, we, we, we need to start by understanding uh, the roles that are played by the chief financial officer of a corporation or of a company, chief financial officer or the CFO. So the, the CFO. So what, does, what are some of the roles that the chief financial officer uh, uh, play? So what we need to understand, number one, to begin with, uh, you need to get to understand that uh, the, the big corporations, for example, we talk of companies like Zambi, ShopRite, those giant corporations. Uh, what happens is that people put money, they buy shares, you know, from buying shares, they become shareholders. So as people buy shares, um, what will happen is that they, those shareholders, they are actually entrusting their funds in the hands of some people so that those people can manage to expand that money so that those people can manage to invest uh, that money. So that's what usually happens. So the chief financial officer of an organization will try by all the means to answer these questions. The questions such as how do we maximize the wealth of the shareholders, okay? How do we maximize the wealth of shareholders? So the, 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 the main objective, the main objective uh, the main objective of the chief financial officer or the CFO is to maximize the maximize the wealth uh, to maximize wealth of shareholders. Okay, shareholders they want to maximize the wealth of the owners of that money. That's what he wants to do. This is the chief, the chief financial officer. So the chief financial officer will ensure that the, the wealth of the, uh, the shareholders is maximized. So it is the duty of the chief financial officer to make sure that uh, there is enough, enough profit in the company. And at the same time, the shareholders, those people who own the money, who invested money in the company, they are happy or their wealth has been maximized. So how do they maximize the wealth now? So the wealth of um, the wealth of a company can be maximized in a, in the following ways. Number one, you, they, you maximize the wealth of the shareholders in in terms of returns. Okay, offering higher returns to the to the shareholders. That is to say, you make sure that you give them more money at the end of it all. And you know that the money that is given to these shareholders is actually the profit that you make at the end of the day. So you need to make enough profit that you need to give to the shareholders in what we call the higher returns. At the same time, you have to make sure uh, that as you try to maximize the, the wealth of the shareholders, you minimize risk. So many minimize minimize risk so risk minimization is actually one of your goals as a as a chief financial officer minimize risk yeah you need to minimize the risk yeah remember investments are risky investments are just risk and the, your duty as the financial officer the chief financial officer you have to minimize the risk to make sure that at least the risk is minimized. The other way of maximizing the shareholder as wealth or the wealth of the shareholders of a company is to ensure that there is an increase in the share price, increase in the share, in the share price. Um, <clears throat> You know that uh, these shares of, of these big companies are priced, right? So what happens is that uh, when you buy shares, for example, um, for example, you buy a share from ShopRite at 64 quart, then if that share by next year 
increases to 70 kwach. It simply means your capital has gained, okay? You who invested, who bought the shares in ShopRite, it has increased by five kwach, okay? I'm saying if you bought shares, one share, for example, at 64, uh, at 65 kwach, then the next day it will be, it is, it will be trading, one share is trading at 70 kwach, that means that your share has increased by five, it has gained by five quarter. So the duty of the chief financial officer, the CFO, will have to ensure that there is an increase in the share price. I'm sure you can observe uh, those who like following the, the financial markets that some companies um, have got their share prices stagnant. The, like, the prices have been stuck for some time just on uh, or at the same level. But uh, that is not what you want as the chief financial officer. All you need to do is to make sure that uh, the share price uh, has been increased. I want you to follow nicely the way how I'm, uh, I'm moving. That's when you will understand financial management. I'm introducing the course to you. Yeah, so after all that is done, you understand that as you are trying to maximize the welfare, or not the welfare, sorry, the wealth of the shareholder, uh, the shareholders, you have got other people, okay, that you have to put in mind. And these are called the, the stake, stakeholders, okay? These stakeholders, they have got different objectives. I want to believe that you're following. You have you want to maximize the wealth of who? the shareholders. That's the main thing that you're doing as a chief, as a financial manager or the chief financial officer. So these guys, uh, as you're trying to maximize, there are some stakeholders. Yeah. The people that are affected by the operations of this company or that are interested in the operations of this company. And these guys. Um, include the following. Number one, you have got managers. Let's start from the managers. The managers have got their own objective. Since funds have been in, uh, entrusted in their hands by the shareholders, so they want to maximize the wealth of the owners of the money. So they will try by all the means as managers to form the decisions, especially inform the decisions, so that uh, uh, they can make as much profit as possible and they try by all the means to maximize the wealthy of the shareholders. These are managers and that is the main goal that they have. I want you to follow nicely. And uh, then you have uh, the employees. Uh, these are stakeholders as well. The employees. With the employees, <clears throat> what they do, these guys have got their own objectives as well. <laughs> They want good salaries. What else do they want? Anybody? The employees, what are their objectives? Can anybody come through? As employees, what do you want from the company? What do you really want? What are your objectives? Bonuses, salary increase. You, you want a salary increase? You want bonuses? What else? Okay. All right, thank you. You also want uh, job security, isn't it? You might not be interested in working for a company where you are, you're not sure whether you'll be there for a long time, any time you can maybe uh, be kicked out of the company. You know, you want the job security. All those things are the things that you want. Actually, <laughs> employees also want to work less. They don't want to work, they don't want to spend much time working. They want to get, to get paid more and doing less. This is where now the challenge comes in, okay? Those are their objectives, the employees. Then you have got the suppliers. What are some of the objectives of the suppliers? I think we can discuss these things. Yeah, as we are trying to open, uh, to, to, to introduce the course together. And I'm, uh, I'm just hoping I'm not losing you. You're following nicely. 
yeah suppliers what do they want like what are their main objectives anybody hello suppliers what do they want okay supply so more you, yes uh, so you find that uh, thank you the the suppliers uh, want to want you to give them money as quick as possible when you go to to order from them they want by that uh, you as you try by all the means as very soon as possible you give them the money yeah you you buy if possible you buy on cash but uh, most of the times the giant companies don't buy on cash they get it, then after some time that's when they pay so they want you to pay them as very quick as possible but uh, you'll understand something you as a as the owners of the business again as the management you know that when you get all your money you are so quick to pay to your suppliers it means you have less cash in the business and if you don't have uh, uh, enough cash in the business you fail to meet the short-term obligations and therefore you're likely to be in a financial crisis so at the same time in as much as it is good to to pay back the credit to the suppliers you also have to strike a balance but you should be careful because if you delay paying the suppliers the suppliers will decide to Maybe next time they will increase the prices or they, they are going to charge you with the interest or they will be, you know, they, 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 you want to be in good terms with them. You are ruining the relationship uh, that you need to maintain in the long run, okay? So those are the suppliers and that is what they, they want. You also have the government. The government has good objectives, okay? The government wants to get tax most of the times from the or oh, the profit making organizations. The government is interested in getting tax. It is interested in making sure that uh, your workers you are working according to the labor laws, right? According to the Ministry of Labor, uh, you are not uh, exploiting your workers in all those things. That's what the government is interested in doing. Even the local community is also interested in what is going on. So you find that the local community, obviously, they want you to be a good company. They want surety that you continue supplying to them, uh, even in the long run. You're not going to go under soon. So now, you've seen all these objectives that are there by the stakeholder. The stakeholders have put different objectives. Then you are sitting there as a chief financial officer or the financial manager of the company. By the way, the, the financial management you are talking about is not for personal finances, like uh, you know, small, small. We are talking about managing the, the finances for the giant corporation, very big companies. Like you are there on top, you're controlling. So what do you do? You have got the, all these individuals that you're working with, the stakeholders, and they have got very different objectives. <laughs> What do you do? What usually happens in, in often times, there are conflicts of interest here and objectives. These objectives are, uh, they are not, most of them are not aligned. <laughs> you find that, for example, you managers, you want to, you want enough profit, okay? And for you to have enough profit, Obviously, you need to reduce the salaries and bonuses that you're giving to your employees. Meanwhile, your employees want salaries, in, salary increments, they want bonuses, okay? I'm just showing you the conflict. You also, as managers, you want your workers to work. You want the employees to be working, not just to be the kind of people that come 10 hours at place of work and they want to knock off early. And that's what usually happens to employees. They, they, they would wish to come late and they want to knock off early. Very early, they are just taking time. Sometimes in the afternoons, they are not there. You know, all those things. But you, 
as managers, you want them to work. So there are those, there is that conflict, okay, in terms of the, uh, the objectives, okay? You suppliers, suppliers and managers, suppliers want you as managers to give them the money as quick as possible, but as managers, you want to delay because you want to use that same money to do other things. So there is a problem here. So the government won't get tax, but you as managers, you want to maximize the wealth of the shareholders. So you are not interested in giving tax. So you have all that. Now, as a chief financial officer, you are, um, you are there on top there, controlling things. You are interested in how do we bridge, in answering the question, how do we bridge the gap or how do you resolve these conflicts or how do you balance up amidst the conflicting objectives so that at the end of it all, uh, we manage to maximize the wealthy of our shareholders. That's what you are trying to answer. Yeah, there could be these different objectives, the, all these conflicts around, but you as a CFO, you will make sure that uh, you, your goal to focus on is, are we maximizing the wealthy of our shareholders? Therefore, you will make the following decisions that summarize, that summarize entire financial management. These are the three key decisions that you make, number one. And these decisions, th these are decisions of the, the chief financial officer or director of finance. It is the investment decisions. Investment decisions, okay? Investment decision. They are just the three key decisions. They summarize the entire course. Investment decisions. As the chief financial officer, you will have to make decisions on behalf of the corporation, especially that pertain to where do we invest our money? Obviously you will make profit, okay? As you make profit as a company, uh, you are going to give dividends, of course, to the shareholders. Then at the same time, there's the money that you call retain the earnings, okay? You retain those earnings, and then you have all that money that remains. The question is, where do you take the money that remains after giving out the dividends to the owners of the money, the shareholders? You'd want to invest that money. So where do you invest? How do you invest? Okay. How do you select the projects that you are investing in? All those decisions you will have to make as in the chief financial officer, CFO, together with the director, finance, DF. This time around, I call for questions. Do, have I lost anyone before we proceed? Do I have anybody lost or anybody with a, con with a concern? Any concern, any challenge? Hello. Any concern, any challenge? Okay, are we together? Like, am I clear or have been lost? No, oh, okay. Thank you. Then we proceed. Now you pay attention <clears throat> to what we are trying to say. You know, the decisions to invest will be fully explained in the course in the following topics. There are some, you know, there are those about nine, 10 topics that are there in the financial management. All those, they are grouped under these decisions. So number one, 
you will have a topic under time value of money. It falls under investment decisions, time value of money, okay? We will talk about this in detail. We will solve as many questions as we can. By the way, we have a lot of questions, a bunch of questions, like we have just have a lot of questions. So we will solve questions, a lot of them, under time value of money, and uh, so that you understand. And as you may be aware, we said that uh, the money loses value as time passes, and that a hundred kwacha today is not a hundred kwacha two years from now. Okay, so you will have to factor in as a director of finance or the chief financial officer CFO, yeah, of the company. You have to to factor in that. You ask yourself, okay, as we are trying to think about to you know, to choose the investment decisions, we we'll have to understand that uh, money lose value with time. We will talk about this in detail when we zero in. There, there is a topic that is called the investment appraisals. Investment appraisals, it falls under investment decision. You will use this one. Now, investment appraisals will help you as the CFO to understand how you select the investment yeah. projects, okay? As the director, yeah. finance, DF, or chief financial officer, CFO, you have the question, there are many, you know, alternatives, okay? A lot of projects around or investment projects around, then you have to make a decision in that you cannot do all of them, but you get to choose one. You will have to choose one, okay? You will have to choose one. So as you try to, to choose one, the question is how do you make a choice? Or like what criterion do you use? What do you use as a criterion to, you know, to, to, to select these objectives? or to select these uh, what about the, the projects here, yeah, these investment projects. So we'll talk about this under investment projects. So we will look at those techniques, okay? The techniques that are used to assess the viability of the investment project. The techniques that we use when are trying to select, okay, are called the, the investment appraisals. Yeah, and the, some of them, we talked about them in business mathematics, should be business mathematics. Last year, yeah, we, we touched a little bit of this part, this topic, when we were talking about the investment decisions. Yeah, some of them, we look at present value, internal rate of return, IRR, the net present value, all those, they fall under that. Okay, so, but we'll look at them now in detail, even the nature of calculations we'll be taking, I'm sure you will, so you will see that they will be a little bit uh, elevated. Okay, so from there, you have a topic that is called working capital management. All these, they fall under investment decisions. Working capital management is a topic. Management. <clears throat> Before I talk about this one, have I lost anyone? Are we together in a confirmation? Am I clear? Are we audible enough? Hello. Okay, under working capital management, you are asking yourself the questions such as number one, how much cash, let me start with cash. You know, when we're talking about working capital, by the way, the key things that fall under working capital are cash, inventories, uh, datas, 
and the creditors, okay? And the creditors. These are the four things, cash, inventory, debtors, and creditors. So when you start with cash, for example, you're asking yourself, how much cash do we need to keep in the company? Yes. To what level should we have the liquidity in the company? How much liquidity do we need? How much cash do we need? Okay. So as a CFO, you need to make such decisions. Because again, you know that when you have too much cash in the company, like cash, that's a problem. It is a problem to have too much cash because that same cash is supposed to be used to do other things, not to remain as cash. Yeah, you just need enough cash, but not too much. You can invest in that cash, you buy other things, okay? You can use that cash to do other things, okay? So you do not need too much cash instead. Yeah. So that's what actually happens. Then again, the other question that you, you ask yourself is inventories. I'm sure you, you have an idea. Anybody with an idea of what inventories are? I talked about this in, this in, what course was that? There was that course in first year, a financial, financial management, hmm? not financial, financial accounting. Yeah, we touched a little bit of inventories. Anybody to remind us, what are inventories? Hello. What are inventories? Anybody to remind us what inventories are? What, what are inventories, colleagues? Today you don't want to talk. Rachel, what are inventories? What do you remember? Can you remember anything? Okay. So you have the inventories in the company. This is stock, which the company has. Yes, sir. We can hear you. Hello, come, come again. This is basically the stock which the company, the stock which uh, the company has. Okay, exactly. The, the stock that the company has. Okay, the stock of the organization. Okay, okay. Yeah, so that is the stock. And again, we have a problem if we have too much stock. Okay, because that stock is supposed to be sold uh, and we have cash, you know, you have to strike a balance. Okay, stock of a, a company has, okay, that is by Madam Upe. Thank you very much. Yeah. So as, 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 a, as a CFO, Chief Financial Officer, you have the questions and you have, you have to answer this question. How much stock are we supposed to have? Let me simplify. For example, maybe you're a business like butter. Let's talk about butter shoes. Those guys for the shoes. Okay. How much stock do they are they supposed to have? Like just shoes, 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 not selling. <laughs> there should be a question because that question has to be answered. Yeah, we have to answer that question. How much stock do we need? Okay. Because too much stock, again, is a problem. Again, too little stock. It's a problem because if you just have too little, people will come here, they buy, and they have insufficient, okay? People buy, buy, then after buying, others will come, you tell them, no, we don't have enough, or, we are going to produce, come again next week, <laughs> you know, all those things, okay? You have to strike a balance. So a balance will have to be stricken. Yeah, 
you have to maintain, make sure that you have, you have, you have to maintain a normal level of inventories. Debtors, mm -hmm. the debtors are the Wampungode, the people who owe, who owe us. They are called accounts receivables sometimes. Okay, so as the chief financial officer, you are interested in finding out, like, you know, these debtors, these people who owe us. How long are they supposed to keep our money without retaining the money? Okay, for how long should they hold the money without paying back? That is your question to answer. And the, because debtors are very difficult, by the way. We have got uh, debtors. Ah, debtors are very difficult. I'm sure you can, you can bear witness to the truth. Some people, when they get the money, when they come to Congola, like, they go. They don't remind themselves like they will be there and there without any, uh, without reminding themselves. Sometimes you even try to follow them up here and there. Okay. So now, as a chief financial officer, you will have to make to 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 to, to come up with the decisions or come up with a with a strategy. Okay, a strategy on how you can make sure that these guys are paying back the money quickly they don't spend too much time on without paying back your money the creditors these are people whom you owe as a company or you have Congoli from them these are suppliers from which whom you got things on credit right so your creditors again you as a cfo you have a question here your question is for how long should we keep their money without paying them paying too early it's a challenge again. We have not enough money to use for other things. Again, paying late, delaying paying is a problem too. So you have to strike a balance, have to be in between. You have to be careful as the chief financial officer. So when you learn all these topics that I've just mentioned, you would have known you how to make investment decisions. You would have been trained how to make investment decisions decisions. Are we fine with the investment decisions? Invest, these are the three decisions that summarize the entire course now. I've mentioned one, investment decisions. The second one is called the financing decision. Financing decisions. Okay. So any question? Do I have any question before I, I proceed to financing decisions? Okay, financing decisions. So here you are interested in finding out like, where do we get the money for us to finance our project as a business? Okay, so you do the courses, the topics such as the sources of finance or business finance. Sources of finance, we'll look at them. It's a topic within financial management. Uh, cost of capital, cost of capital. Sometimes when you want to get the money, source money, maybe you would want to get a debt, right? Get a debt. Now, as you get a debt, bear in mind that if you get a debt, that debt has a cost. There is no debt for free. <laughs> so in financial management, we will train you how to assess and understand the cost of capital. Like, How do you make decisions? knowing the cost of capital now you know it's a very deep now it's a deep conversation really it's a very good topic but very detailed we'll talk about that and uh, we will look at the business environment yeah that is under still financing yeah the environment so <clears throat> when you look at all these these decisions you have to make as a cfo where do we get the finance? How do we finance the project? We want to build this. We want to do that. Where do we get the money? For our own information, the company does not just use the money that they get from their profits. That we have to keep in. They have other sources. Of, they try to find sources of money, find money from somewhere. It's not just that they, it's not that they just make the money from selling and selling, then they make profit. No, no, no they will find the other means, okay? Sources of finance, where do you get the money, okay? 
as a CFO, you should be aware and you have to come up with such decisions, make such decisions. Okay, these are the three topics that will help you who we'll do these in financial management. They'll help you on how these guys now make such decisions, financing decisions. Okay. After financing decisions, we have the last decisions, which is the dividend decisions. Before I talk about the dividend decisions, any question? Do I have any question? This is the last decision, set of decisions that you have to make, the, the dividend decision. Any question? Okay, there is no question, sir. So under dividend decisions, you have to make a decision on, we have made a profit. We have given, uh, we have cleared all our expenses. We have this profit. What do we do, okay, with the money that remains? Do we have to give to the shareholders? And do we have to give them more dividends? Or we should do keep some money so that we can finance other projects and just give them a little, little of the profit as the dividends? Or do we have to give all the profit that we make as dividends to the owners of the company who are the shareholders? No, you'll be trained. You don't just make this busy. Oh, you don't just wake up and say, okay, no, since last year we didn't give them all. This year we're going to give them all of them. Ah, you'll be guided and trained properly how to make such decisions. You'll be guided. How do you make such decisions? on whether you have to give them all the money or just have to give them part of, or maybe you have to give them 25%. What do you do with the money? Do you have to invest the money somewhere else again? Or do you have to plow back the money within the business? What do we really do? By the way, when you invest the profit back in the business, that is called plowing back. Plowing back, plow, like plow, plowing back. Okay, do you have to plow back or what do you do? When you make all those decisions, then you are answering, you are making what is called uh, dividend decisions. So the following are the, the, the topics that you have under this one is business, uh, business evaluation or asset evaluation. You learn how to evaluate assets, how to assign value to the assets. Very interesting. And you will also look at what is called financial statement analysis, FSA. Now, let me write properly so that people can get it. You remember there is that topic in first, there is that course in first year uh, where you learn financial statement, financial accounting, yes. In financial accounting, you are learning financial statements. Uh -huh. Yeah. Then in, now you will learn how to analyze them, not to prepare them. I think you already know how to prepare the financial statements. This time around, you know how to prepare what is uh, the income, the income statement. You know how to prepare the balance sheet, all those things already. But uh, under this one, you learn how, how do you analyze? You know that the balance sheet, the income statement, the cash flow, all those statements, they have a lot of information to communicate to us. So the question of the day is, how do you analyze? Okay, so you will learn how to make analysis. Very interesting, actually. Uh, this topic is very, very interesting. By the way, this same topic, right? the financial statement analysis is a course in fourth year somewhere there. It's a course like you. You do one year to learn how to, you learn how to analyze the financial state. Those same balance sheet, uh, what is that? Profit and loss account, cash flow statements. It's a very detailed conversation. But in this course, you don't do it as a course, you just do it as a topic. Yeah. So when you do all those things, they'll help you how to make decisions. Yeah, uh, only dividend. As a, as a company. So to sum it up now, how do you summarize? The major concerns 
of uh, financial management are investment decisions, investment decisions, uh, financing decisions, financing decisions, and uh, dividend, dividend decisions, dividend decisions. These three set of decisions, they give us what is called the scope of financial management. This is the whole financial management, like everything that you'll be talking about from the time when we zero in next week and up to the time when we'll be done talking about it. There'll be nothing outside what I've talked about that you will learn. This time around, I call for questions.